I haven't done a basic introduction to FreeCAD yet. It was time for me to update my version, so this video should be useful whether you're downloading for the first time or updating your copy. I'm here at the FreeCAD homepage, and there's two links that both take us to the same download page, so I'll click this one. This tells me that the most recent stable version is 0.21.2, so I'll download that. You can get newer development versions, but if you're watching this video, those probably aren't for you. I have a 64-bit Windows machine. I'm on Windows 11. I believe the second option for all three of these operating systems is the portable version. This should allow you to access FreeCAD without installation. But I haven't tried that, and I'm happy to install it, so I'll choose the 64-bit installer. The executable file begins downloading, and this will take a little while depending on your internet connection. As long as I'm waiting for the download to complete, I think I'll, down, I'll donate a little bit. $20 is a pretty small donation for what I'm getting. Looks like the executable file is ready to run, so let's do it. If you already have a version of FreeCAD installed, that will remain installed on your computer and the 21.2 version will be installed alongside it. So there's really no difference I can see between a first time installation and an update. Yes I do. Great, thanks wizard. Next. If you've never read a general public license, I do recommend it. It's pretty cool to learn how open source software and its derivatives are kept free for everyone. The preamble is especially good. Next. I am going to install for anyone using this computer. Note where it's putting all the files. I'm going to, to install all the components. I definitely want that desktop icon. The default start menu folder is fine, so install. This part takes about 5 or 10 minutes, so I'll speed up until it's done. And we just need to hit finish. Now, I could launch FreeCAD for the first time from the wizard. But you can see that it has created the desktop shortcut right next to the shortcut for my previous version of FreeCAD. So I'll just hit finish and open it from the desktop shortcut. It's got a cool new loading graphic, but the interface looks mostly the same as previous versions, save for the new version number in the top right. Now, here's where your typical CAD introduction video will walk you through all the screens, sections, and basic tools of the CAD package. I'm not going to do that because there are some excellent videos on YouTube already that do a better job than I could, and I'll leave links to those in the comments. Instead, the theme of the rest of this video is navigating the documentation on the FreeCAD website when you're stuck. I reference the website in a number of my other videos because I think reading the documentation written by the developers is still a better first option than searching YouTube for third-party videos, like this one. So first things first, since I was updating my FreeCAD package, I'll go back to the downloads page and scroll down to check the release notes to see if I'm in for any surprises. It looks like they are changing a backup file type, but I haven't seen a warning on startup, so no problem. Then we've got some immediate and obvious improvements to the user interface, improved capabilities, capabilities you might not realize were there unless you went to change your preferences, and then a number of other improvements. But anytime they move buttons around, it can get annoying. So it's nice that they tell you where these went. I don't use the Arch or Draft workbench much, so I'll blow past these. And I think it's really cool how other open source solvers, particularly for multi-physics simulations, are being integrated into FreeCAD. Here they're talking about the Elmer solver. I'm really hoping to dig into some of these soon. Here it looks like they've made some improvements to magnetic simulations, deformation equations, etc. And now we get to the part, get to things I'm most interested in, which is improvements to the part design workbench. Here a new feature in the whole dialog, B spline improvements in the Sketcher workbench. And I think a lot of people are going to like this. This used to be there used to be this weird thing 
where you couldn't select points if you were on the back side of a sketch. That appears to be fixed. Some new constraint options in Sketcher. And I'm pretty excited about this one. You can specify a surface finish in TechDraw, which makes that workbench a little bit more professional. And that's it. Finally, I want to show you where you can find help and get your question answered. So let's go back to the FreeCAD homepage. And up in the top ribbon here, the documentation link is actually a drop down menu, which I think might make it more confusing for a newcomer. What they're trying to do with this drop down is provide you with some quick links to pages that can all be accessed from the documentation index. I'll try to prove that to you. So let's just take a look at a couple of the links that a new user might want to use. So getting started surely sounds like a great place for a newbie. Note the URL and the front page. They also have a free CAD manual. That sounds like a useful read. But I'm not going to start with any of those. I'm going to show you that you can get to all of those and more through the documentation index. So let's select that. And the first thing I'll point out is that there's that free CAD manual link again. And it takes us to the same page that the drop down menu did. But here on this page, we kind of got the same situation where it's not obvious to a newbie where they should go from here. I think we can rule out the Power Users Hub and the Developers Hub, but then we've got these three options, the Users Hub, the FreeCAD Manual, and the most unassuming of the three, the Table of Contents. Once again, I'd argue to you that all three of these will eventually lead you to similar content, but the way you get there differs a little bit. So pick one, get familiar with that, if you can't find what you're looking for, then look in one of the other two. I'm going to introduce you to all three options here, but I personally prefer the table of contents, so let's click on the British flag version of that. Which brings us here. And a major topic of other videos is going to be introducing you to the elements of the FreeCAD interface, which I happen to know is in the Getting Started tab. Hey, that's a familiar hyperlink, isn't it? And lo and behold, it's the same URL and web page that we found in the drop down menu earlier. I really recommend you read this page. Open your newly downloaded version of FreeCAD and explore the FreeCAD interface while you read through this page. The theme of this video is navigating the documentation, so I'll go back to the documentation index page, click on the user hub, and then interface. and I find the same graphic with a slightly shorter explanation. Similarly, if I go to the FreeCAD manual, then interface, this begins on the start screen and as we scroll down we see the same explanation with a slightly different version of the graphic. So that's one common, that's one theme common to the user hub, manual, table of contents, set of navigation choices. Often they'll bring you to unique URLs with similar descriptions of the same topic. So no matter which one you choose, you will find the information. It just might be organized a little bit differently, and you've got to decide which organization you like best. Other times, all three will eventually take you to an identical URL, and that's the case when it comes to learning about workbenches. Since workbenches are both central to the FreeCAD concept of operation, as well as a common point of confusion for new users, I'll finish up by showing you how to get to the part design workbench documentation in each of the three we, uh, ways I've presented. Let's start from the users hub. So that path is users hub, workbenches, part design workbench. Note the URL and the interface. Using the f manual, the path is FreeCAD manual, workbenches, part design workbench, identical URL and web page. Let's end on my favorite, the table of contents route. That path is table of contents, workbenches, and the part design workbench. 
same URL, same web page. Let's back up one page to talk about all the workbenches. Like I said, this is a common point of confusion for new users. While this can be frustrating at first, the idea I want to sell you on is that you really only need a couple of these workbenches at first, and then you can branch out as you get more comfortable. So I use FreeCAD for designing small machine parts and assemblies. My workflow looks like this. I open the part design workbench. From part design, I open up Sketcher and make a 2D sketch. Then I go back to part design to add the third dimension. I'll select the face that I want to add a new feature to, then go back to Sketcher. So for me, the workflow is Sketcher, Part Design, Sketcher, Part Design, and so on until I have my part. If I want to make an engineering drawing for my machinist, then I'll use TechDraw Workbench. There's also capabilities for making assemblies and doing deeper finite element methods analysis. So this is really like having a few CAD packages in one, and that's where the power of the workbenches come in. Most of the time, you may only need two of them, but the rest are there to give you the flexibility to branch out seamlessly into new areas if you choose. If you don't want to branch out, then just ignore them. Finally, I do want to point out to you some of those third-party content creators because their videos are an excellent source of information, especially for very specific questions. So in addition to the website, here are a few of the most prolific YouTubers I've found. I only produce new content if I wasn't able to find the answer on their channels or if I think I have some unique insight to offer. If one of these guys already hit the nail on the head, I'll just direct you to them. I hope this was helpful.